winter harvest a tour of the california garden some things for you to do some tips and tricks all this and a lot more coming up so let's begin with all the harvest we made this month beginning with broccoli we were growing broccoli in containers as well as in raised beds and we harvested a few main heads in the last month and we are now harvesting the side buds or the side florets now thanks to this green stock spinner i can spin the container around and harvest these florets easily look at the first harvest here beautiful looking broccoli florets and we had some more broccoli florets growing this one again is in a container and this is one of the best seasons to grow broccoli broccoli loves the cool weather and you can harvest a lot of broccoli from your plants during this time of the year and here are some more harvests now the broccoli plant will keep growing and keep producing these side florets that you see here so the broccoli plant will keep giving it will keep giving you florets like these almost throughout this month cabbage we were growing cabbage not only in our raised beds but also in our containers this is a harvest of our cabbage from our raised bed and you can see here beautiful looking head of cabbage cabbage loves the cooler season it will produce nice heads like these and one of the ways to know when to harvest cabbage is to just feel around the head of the cabbage if it's hard enough you can harvest them and here are some more cabbages growing in the raised bed now we have several cabbages growing in the raised bed and they are spaced not too far apart but you can still see they produced quite a good head of cabbage here carrots we have carrots growing both in raised bed as well as in containers and this is the harvest from our raised beds and this is the korean carrot variety that we planted quite early around august and it has grown very well through the winter season as you can see beautiful looking carrots here now these carrots are not huge so medium sized carrots but they are very delicious they are quite sweet our first year growing these kind of carrots and they have grown quite well you can see nice bunch of carrots here all being harvested from our raised bed and you can look at a harvest here beautiful looking carrots and once you wash these carrots they look amazing you can look at our harvest of carrots here beautiful looking carrots cauliflower one of my favorite vegetables to grow during the winter season is cauliflower this cauliflower that we are harvesting was planted quite early one of the first cauliflower plants we planted around end of august and you can see it has developed a beautiful head of cauliflower and i just love eating cauliflower it's one of my favorite vegetables in the garden and you can look at one more cauliflower head here now the cauliflower leaves are edible too you can use them just like you use cabbage leaves you can also just bake them with some salt and some olive oil they taste amazing you can stir fry them as well and each cauliflower plant produces one head of cauliflower so once you harvest the cauliflower you can then discard the rest of the plant these are beautiful looking cauliflowers cilantro cilantro is one herb that we use a lot and this season i planted cilantro almost in all parts of my garden in the ground as you can see here we are harvesting our cilantro from the ones that grew in the ground and you can look at some bunches of cilantro here this is one way to harvest cilantro you can just take a scissor and chop off the top part of the plant just like you see here and the plant will grow back some leaves right away and you can look at our harvest here beautiful looking cilantro and we were back in just a few days to harvest some more cilantro the cilantro plant will keep growing throughout the growing season it loves the cooler weather and as long as you are adding some nutrients like worm tea and some organic fertilizer these plants will continue to grow and we also had cilantro growing in containers you can look at our harvest of cilantro here beautiful looking cilantro and this was one of the best herbs we grew during this month moving on to galangal 
this very interesting vegetable was growing in a pot as you see here we just planted one tuber and you can see here it grows just like ginger we had to remove the plant from the pot to harvest this and the roots were quite tangled as you can see the pot has only so much space for the roots to grow and this is quite a big plant and we used quite a light type of soil with peat moss, perlite and compost and you can still see the plant grew very dense roots so it's best if you grow galangal in the ground if you have the space however we don't consume a lot of galangal so we just planted this in a pot and the roots were so compact that I had to break them apart so that I could harvest the tubers and galangal is used a lot in Thai cuisine as well as some other Asian cuisines we use galangal to make soups you can also make pickles they are a spicier version of ginger as far as taste goes they look very much like ginger and they are very nutritious they are supposed to be good as a medicine as well in a lot of cultures and they look just like turmeric or ginger when you are harvesting them this was one of the more difficult vegetables to harvest but you can look at our harvest here after washing it up these are beautiful looking galangal roots and once you have harvested the galangal you can still save a few plants and the way we saved our plants was to plant them in pots like these so that if we need to grow galangal again in the upcoming season we can use them so I'll provide links to these very useful pots these are extremely useful pots for your garden to grow taller plants and you can check out the video description as well as the links in the comments to purchase this product and we are just planting it as you see here for some supply of these galangal plants in the future lettuce we were growing lettuce in containers it's best to grow lettuce in containers because it is less prone to damage from insects and you can discard some of the older leaves that you see that are dried or yellow and you can start harvesting the lettuce the lettuce plant can be harvested as a cut and come again plant so you just harvest what you need and the plant will keep producing leaves on the side for quite a long time and these lettuce plants were planted as seedlings which we got from our local garden center and you can look at the lettuce here they are beautiful looking leaves very crunchy and delicious excellent in salads something that everyone must grow in their home garden if you need access to some delicious salad greens and this is a harvest once again crunchy delicious lettuce and we were back in just a few days to harvest the plants completely now you can wait longer to harvest the plants however we had a lot of rain here in southern california and the plant didn't look too healthy after the rains it probably washed all the nutrients down and we also had other plants that we wanted to plant in a container so we harvested all the lettuce plants as you see here this is another way to harvest your lettuce is to remove the plants completely to get a big harvest like you see here limes we had our bears or the persian lime tree loaded with limes this month as well we have been harvesting limes from this tree for quite some time now and these limes turn yellow when they are ready for harvest and you can look at a harvest of limes here beautiful looking limes red leaf mustard now mustard greens are an easy green to grow in your garden they are very healthy they are very nutritious and they are quite good in taste as well they add a nice spicy kick to your salads if you want to use them raw you can definitely eat these raw but the way we cook mustard greens is by cooking them with spinach so we boil them with spinach and add some ginger and garlic and it makes some really good dishes so that's how we use mustard greens but you can use mustard greens the way you want this is another plant that's growing in our other raised bed you can see the color of the leaves nice red color full of antioxidants and something that you can try growing in your home garden since it's very easy to grow beautiful harvest here radish we were growing korean radishes in our raised bed 
and it was time to harvest all the radishes from our raised bed. If you remember from our last month's garden tour, we were growing radishes, carrots and beets all in the same raised bed. And we are harvesting these radishes here, these Korean radishes. They have a very interesting shape. And they are also pungent, just like the Minoways radish, they are pungent radishes. So you can cook them as well. You can eat them raw as salads. They are a little pungent though, a little strong in taste. You can look at our harvest here, beautiful looking radishes. And in just a few days, we were back to harvest the rest of the radishes. You don't want to leave radishes too long. You need to harvest them when it's time. You can harvest a couple of radishes and see how the roots look like. And this is how your radish size should be for the Korean radishes. This is the best time to harvest these radishes and use them in your dishes. Another harvest of radish here, beautiful looking radishes, very crunchy, very delicious. Spinach. We were growing spinach interplanted with our taro root plants on one bed. You can see here beautiful looking leaves. And spinach once again is a cool season crop. It loves growing in the cooler weather. So you must grow spinach in the cooler weather. They do bolt very easily when the temperatures are warm. And we harvested quite a lot of spinach from just this one raised bed area. Beautiful looking spinach greens. And you can eat spinach raw. You can cook them. They are loaded with vitamins and minerals. And they are actually very delicious. So if you want to grow a delicious green that you can use to add some valuable nutrients and minerals in your diet. Then spinach is the way to go. You can look at our spinach harvest here. Beautiful looking spinach leaves. And the plant will keep growing back and produce more spinach leaves. Sweet potato. Our sweet potato plants were growing in the raised bed, our first raised bed. And you can see the sweet potatoes grow around the main plant or the main tuber. And our soil was a little compact after the rains. So we used a spade to just loosen up the soil. And you can see it's a lot easier to harvest the tubers once the soil is a little loose. And remember that sweet potatoes grow straight down. So it's important to check below your sweet potato plant whether there are any more left. And the sweet potato greens, the leaves are edible too. They are actually quite popular in some Vietnamese and Thai cuisines. They are very nutritious and delicious. However, we don't use the leaves, we just use the tubers. And as you can see here, we are just checking below the plant for any more tubers. And this is what we got from one plant. And this is our second plant. We are harvesting the sweet potatoes from our second plant now. And after you harvest sweet potatoes, you need to cure them. This is a very important step where you can store them in your greenhouse or in your garage. Wrap them up with burlap cloth. And that will increase the amount of sugars in the sweet potatoes. So after you harvest the sweet potatoes, it's very important to cure them for at least a week. And you can look at all these sweet potatoes that are coming out of the second plant. Gorgeous looking sweet potatoes. Quite decent in size as well. And this is our harvest after washing the sweet potatoes. These will be cured for about 7 days before we can eat them. Tangerines. Our gold nugget tangerine plant was producing quite a lot of tangerines this year. This plant usually produces tangerines every other year. So you can see there are a lot of tangerines on the plant, about a dozen or more. And these are extremely sweet tangerines, one of the varieties that I recommend that you grow in your home garden. These plants grow very easily. They produce tangerines that are very delicious, very sweet. They do have a thick skin, but their taste is amazing. You can look at our harvest of tangerines here. Beautiful looking gold nugget tangerines. Turmeric. We planted this turmeric plant about a year ago. It takes about 8 months at least for the turmeric plant to grow. And although we planted them a year ago, they actually start growing only around May or June. So about 8 months of growing time for this turmeric plant. And to get the turmeric tubers out, we actually took out a lot of soil from the pot. And you can see some of the tubers appearing now. 
and it was still a little difficult to get all the tubers out. So that's why we decided to dump the contents of the pot in a container just to clear out all the soil. And you can look at how root bound this container is. And this is one of the problems growing any plant in a container is that it will get root bound pretty quickly. But since we harvest turmeric every year, it doesn't really matter even if it's root bound. The plant does produce a lot of tubers as you see here. And we are going to be separating the tubers out. This is a massive bunch of turmeric that you see here. And we are going to be washing them later. You can look at all the tubers here from just a small container, one plant. Turmeric can produce a lot of tubers in a relatively small space. And this is one of the biggest bunches as you see here. And this is another harvest of turmeric from our whiskey barrel container. By January or so, the leaves will dry out completely. And we are just again dumping the contents of this pot onto a tarp. And just removing all the soil which we can add back easily into the container. And you can look at the massive bunch of turmeric tubers here. This is quite a big harvest of turmeric from one plant. And we are now washing the turmeric bunch. This is we just jet spray it with some water, get all the dirt out. And then we will use the collected water to water some of our plants. And this is one more turmeric bunch from another container. We had turmeric growing in several places in several containers. You can look at this nice bunch of turmeric. And after harvesting all the turmeric, you can look at a harvest here. Beautiful looking turmeric. The first step in using turmeric is to chop the tubers into smaller parts, like you see here, and then slice them so that you're ready for the next step, which is drying them. We just dry them in the sun. There's plenty of sun here in Southern California, so easy to dry them in the sun. And once these turmeric tubers are dry, we then use a blender to grind it into a powder, which is turmeric powder. And it's a spice that can be used in a variety of dishes. We use turmeric powder almost every day in our cooking. You can look at how nice and bright the turmeric powder is. The ones you get in the store are not this vibrant and nice. But homegrown turmeric is really nice, really healthy for you. And there are a lot of uses for this spice. And now let's take a tour of our garden. Starting with the raised beds. In our first raised bed, we are just preparing this raised bed. We harvested the sweet potatoes from here. We have a few cauliflower plants, some spinach plants, and some more beets and some cauliflowers towards the end. But a lot of planting yet to be done. In the next raised bed, we sowed a lot of seeds. And just after we sowed the seeds last month, we got a lot of rain, which washed off a lot of these seeds. But you can see the seeds have mostly germinated. I'm just waiting for these seedlings to grow a little taller and they will be on their way. In the next raised bed, we planted some lettuce, followed by a lot of cabbages. You saw us harvest a few cabbages from this raised bed, and you can see there are a lot more cabbages on the way. We also have some red acre cabbages, some cauliflower, some broccoli, some more cauliflowers towards the end of this raised bed. So all in all a lot of brassicas on this raised bed. Moving on to the next raised bed, we have more cabbages. These are growing quite well as you can see here, producing larger heads of cabbages. We have a couple of cauliflower plants towards the edge and some more cauliflower. We then have our red leaf mustard. You saw us harvest a lot of these mustard greens and they're still growing strong. We have some spinach. These spinach plants are growing well now. They like the cooler weather. There are different varieties of spinach here. All looking very good. 
In the next raised bed, we have a mustard plant, the red leaf mustard, one cauliflower plant, we have a lot of beets, and between the beet plants, we planted some potatoes, some seed potatoes, and here are the beets again, beautiful looking greens. They should be producing beets very soon. We have some cauliflower plants. And then we have our taro root plants, between which we planted our spinach plants as well. So you can see they can grow well together. And we also had to prune down our ivy goat plants. As you can see here, they have been completely pruned and they will grow back in the upcoming months. And that completes the tour of our raised bed garden. Let's now move on to the containers. In the first container, we have our longevity spinach plant. That's looking good. We have our kohlrabis. The kohlrabis have grown very well now. These were direct sowed from seeds. And we have a couple of cauliflower plants. Followed by our early long egg plant, not looking too good with the cooler weather setting in. We have our broccoli plant. This broccoli plant is producing a lot of side florets. We have one more broccoli plant. Once again producing side florets now. And some cilantro plants at the bottom. Followed by carrots. These are looking quite good now. We have our Korean radish. We had our Korean radishes growing on the raised bed as well. Followed by some burpee A1 carrots, which have now sprouted and are growing quite well. Our Egyptian walking onions had a lot of aphids. We had to trim down the leaves and they should grow back faster now. We just planted some strawberry plants here. You will see more details in the to do section of this video. And this broccoli plant is actually in the container on the side but has grown quite tall. There are a couple of plants in this container. We have a couple of cauliflower plants in the next container. As you can see, producing good heads of cauliflower now. They will be ready for harvest anytime now. We have our sorrel plants. This is a very interesting green that I'm growing for the first time this year. We have some fenugreek greens here. These are almost ready for harvest. I will be harvesting them in about a week or so. Our ivy goat plant has been trimmed down completely in the container as well. Followed by our mint plant, which is looking good. Producing some new leaves here. We planted some more spinach in this container. This is the Indian spinach. Followed by some potato onions. These potato onion plants are looking good now. They are growing quite well. Followed by some seed potatoes that we planted here. They have popped up now. Followed by cilantro. We planted a lot of cilantro. We have been harvesting a lot of cilantro from this container. Followed by our broccoli plant, which is producing a nice head of broccoli as you see here. Some side florets as well. Followed by some shallots that we planted. And you will see more details again in the to-do section of the video. We have our kale plant. The kale is looking quite good. This is the dwarf kale plant. Our taro root plant is growing okay. Doesn't like the cooler weather so much. Followed by some more radishes. These are the pink radishes. The ones that mature quickly. And that completes the tour of our containers. And now let's look at some things for you to do in your garden. We had a lot of rain here in Southern California. So it's a good idea to save up the rainwater that you get. What we did is we used as many containers as possible. 
You don't need fancy rain barrels to conserve rainwater. Our gorilla cart as well as our buckets were useful enough to trap all the rainwater, which we then used to water all our plants, including the ones in the greenhouse. Next, we are going to show you how to plant shallots. Now, in your local Home Depot, you will see shallots available for purchase. And we bought a few shallots. These are sets. And I usually don't like planting onions from sets, but I wanted to try out shallots and see how they grow when they are planted from sets. So you can see that we have a lot of shallots here. Not all of them will be healthy. For example, this packet came with 10 of them, but some of them are good, some of them are okay. And before we plant the shallots, we wanted to add some more soil to the raised bed. So we added some peat moss, some compost, and we are mixing it up very well with the existing soil. We are also adding some fertilizer. I'll provide links to this fertilizer in the video description. But this is an organic fertilizer for vegetables and it works excellent for shallots and other vegetables as well. And now we can plant our shallots. We are planting the sets about an inch deep. You don't want to go too deep, but you don't want to go too shallow as well. So one inch is probably the perfect depth to plant your shallots. Now we are also adding some organic fertilizer in our whiskey barrel container. If you remember, we harvested our lettuce plants from this whiskey barrel container and we are now mixing it up with some organic fertilizer. And that should be enough for these shallots that we are planting. So you can grow up to four or five shallots in one whiskey barrel container. The farther apart you place the shallots, the more bulbs it will produce because they grow in a bunching kind of a behavior. And once again, we are planting them about an inch deep. Now, if you plant them a little less deep, that's okay, but don't plant them too deep. And it's always a good idea to label your planting. And we're also going to be planting these strawberries in a whiskey barrel container. And for this container, we are amending the potting mix with some worm castings. I always use worm castings from Vermistera. They are absolutely amazing. The quality is really good and the prices are very decent as well. And you can order them online. And I'll provide links to ordering this product as well in the video description and comments. Now, when you open up the strawberry plant packet, they advertise as selling about 10 plants, but they're all in one bunch and you can separate them. Now, it's not too easy to separate them, but it's not that difficult either. So you can just see which plants come off easily. You want at least three or four plants in one whiskey barrel container. And then you can always replant your runners once they come out. And we are planting them right at about the soil level that they were sent. So right about there. You can go a little deeper, that's okay. The plants will still grow. And the plants don't look green because they have been wrapped in a bag and they've been sitting in the store for quite some time. And an important thing to do before watering is to add some mulch. In this case, we are using straw as a mulch. This is a very useful kind of mulch for growing strawberries. That way the strawberries don't touch the ground and there are less chances of insects or diseases on the strawberry fruits. And this also has a tacking agent. And here we are using our saved rainwater to water this plant. The tacking agent gets activated by water. It sticks to the soil and is a very useful thing to have in your home garden. So there we have it folks, that was our January episode. If you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. If you have a question or comment, post them in the comments box below. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.